Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and today I'm going to be working with the leftovers from the first set of cards that I made using the April 2021 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll consider clicking on that subscribe button below and ringing that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I am back this month with another sheet load leftovers feature. Now the past couple months I haven't done it because I think last month I hardly had any leftovers from the sketch and cards. But this month I did have some pattern paper and I had tons of off-white cardstock because we were making those slimline card bases. Now, if you haven't seen how I created the first set of cards using April 2021, I will have the debut video with the free printable and the process video linked in that description box below. Remember, all you have to do to get that free download is be a subscriber to my channel. Since we made many slimline cards this month, I am going to try to do the same with my leftovers. Now these will be a little bit different and I'll get into more of that later, but I think this will be a fun alternative and a way to use up a lot of these pieces. As I do the voiceover on the process, I will let you know other tools and products I bring in. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can always leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Off camera, I did do a little pre-planning and pre-measurement writing, and I just had this sketch off to the side while I created. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is take the two largest pieces of cardstock that were left, and I know by my measurements that I will end up with three card bases and then three final cards. These large pieces got cut to 11 inches wide by two and a half inches tall. These were then folded to a final size of five and a half inches wide by two and a half inches tall. Once I had those all folded, I brought in the next largest size of scraps and I chose three of those and I cut each of them into a piece that was six and a quarter inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. And that is the size I make my slim lines and that the April one measured so it will fit in those standard envelopes you can find almost anywhere. I cut my pattern papers so I had three sets of two pieces. The little one on the left is one inch wide by two and a quarter inches tall and originally I had planned for the larger one to be four and an eighth inches wide by two and a quarter inches tall but I did end up cutting this down a little bit more later you'll see that to four inches wide by two and a quarter inches tall. The folded card is going to sit on that background base and it is going to have a little bit of a unique fold to it. So I brought in my score at board so I could put a score line one and a quarter inches to the right of the center fold. I did, you see, place here those pattern papers to see how they fit and that's when I discovered the bigger one was a little bit too long. I went ahead and put those three score lines on there and then I brought in my little Fiskars Photo Bypass Trimmer because it has a four inch mark as the longest which is perfect and I just trimmed each of those three pattern pieces down so they were ready for later. To make that fun fold that I was just talking about I needed to do a little bit of gluing before moving on. What I did was open the card up and I put adhesive between the center fold line and the score line that I just made. That way when the card is shut, that left part stays put and then just kind of a flap opens up on the card. You have that kind of bound or border there on the edge that stays flat. I just thought that added a little bit of fun to the card. Once those were all adhered, it was time to put on the pattern paper. I'm going to be putting on one of the floral pieces with one of the text pieces. And what I did was I just tried to center each of the pattern papers between the edge of the card and the fold or the score lines. Yeah. 
Now this next part is completely optional, but I wanted to bring in some gold twine and add a little bow where that score is. So I will be using my We Are Memory Keepers Cropodial, and I put two holes on the score line, one from each end. I did use the smallest hole on this, I believe it's an eighth of an inch, and I just tried to eyeball as best as I could in from each edge. Once I had the holes in place, I cut a pretty good length of that gold twine and I folded it so it was in fourths. I then threaded each end through the back of the card and tried to get that centered best as I could left to right. And once I did have that in place to hold it in half, I brought in my Scotch Blue removable tape and put that on the back. Now you would definitely not have to use your Scotch Blue removable tape here, that's just what I had handy. I continued this same process for the other two card bases, and while you watch me do that, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. These are just fun little questions that I like to ask you and have you answer so we get to know a little bit more about each other. Today's question is, what is one of your oldest tools that you couldn't paper craft without? For me, I have a couple. One of them was the one you just saw there, that Cropodile. I know it's at least 15 years old. I bought it right when it came out and I use it for so many different things. Now the next one is going to be probably the oldest tool that I still have. I've had paper trimmers forever, but I've gotten rid of a lot and gotten new ones. But my oldest tool that I still use and couldn't imagine not having is my heat tool when I do my heat embossing. Now don't forget, if you're gonna take the time to answer the QOTV, to add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV to your comment so I know that you've answered it and would like me to see it. The next step in the process was to cut a couple circles that I will end up using for the sentiments. Each of my cards will need a half circle, so I cut two from this piece of off-white cardstock. Now I want you to take a minute or take a second and admire my new cutting plates for my cuddle bug. You say new cutting plates for your cuddle bug because you know they don't make them. Yes, I got these on Amazon. My crafty friend Melissa Miller told me about these and they work beautifully. If you have a cuddle bug that you don't want to quit using when your plates break, I do have the plates that I bought linked in the description box below so you can check them out. Thanks Melissa for that heads up. Next, I cut each of those circles in half and I just kind of eyeballed this. I do only need three for today's cards, so I'll just save that fourth one for later. I did go ahead and bring in my Misty to stamp today so I can set that sentiment up once and stamp it three times. I will be using the saying, an old fashioned hello on my cards. I'll be stamping with Versamark and then using detail gold embossing powder on that. I'm going to be cutting off some of the right edge of each of those half circles. So when I set up my sentiment, I did make sure that it was aligned to the left of the half circle. And then since my pieces are a little bit different in size, I did put it more toward the bottom. Once I had it on the door of the Misty, I made sure that it was straight across. I did have to do just a little bit of adjusting, but once that was ready, I used my embossing buddy so my powder only sticks to where I want it. I brought in my new tool that my sister made me to help me rub on the top of that Misty door and get a nice impression, and then I added my embossing powder. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp and add powder to all three of these pieces before I bring in my heat tool and heat set that powder. As always, I like to start at the back of the piece of cardstock and warm that powder up a little bit and then bring my tool to the front and finish it until the powder is melted and nice and shiny. After all of the powder was set, I brought back in my big trimmer and I cut a little bit off the right side of each of my sentiment pieces. I just tried to eyeball as best as I could a nice even border to the right of the D. 
I was going to go ahead and start assembling the cards now, but I decided that when my card was on my backer, that that outside was pretty plain. So I brought in one of my favorite embossing folders, my Cuddlebug Dots embossing folder, and this is actually a five by seven. So that means it is going to cover the entire six and a quarter inch length of my backer pieces. Here I just wanted to show you the difference between my old plate, how badly it's cut up, versus that new beautiful crystal clear one. I did try to make sure when I place my piece into the folder that I put it as straight as possible. And here's a little look at the difference between the two. I just love that texture that those dots add. And because one of my pattern paper does have some polka dots in the back, this matches it very nicely. Now all of the pieces are ready so I can start assembling. The first thing I did was place my sediment in the lower right hand corner of that larger pattern paper piece. Then I added adhesive to the back of that and I did try to go around the outer edge and then to each side of where the twine is just to help that stay stuck down. This then got centered on my six and a quarter by three and a quarter inch backer. And then I'm going to tie just a knot into that twine. Now this one I did tie a little bit loose and the center is kind of flopping around. So once I had those tails cut, I brought in my glue dots and I added one behind the knot on there so it would stay put and not move around all over the place. I put together the remaining two cards in the same way, but this time I did do more of an assembly line where I did all of the sentiments, put the cards on the bases, and then did the knots. For my card bling today, I am going to use these enamel hearts that were leftovers from a recent paper pumpkin kit. My mom is in town visiting for my birthday and my daughter's and she pulled these out of an old kit today and told me I needed to use them and how perfect that that pink color kind of matched the pink in one of the flowers. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I used some of my leftovers today. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget that if you're going to share some of your sheet load leftovers to use the hashtag on screen. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.